What's up guys? In this video I'm going to be showing you how much I spent while living in Chiang Mai for six months. Uh, kind of give you some expectations on the kind of lifestyle you can live on this budget. And then I'm also going to be going over how much I'm expecting to pay for my next trip to Chiang Mai. So let's go ahead and jump in here. Let me make my head a little smaller. All right, so the main expense uh, to get to Thailand was the flight. So this is my this is the cost that I spent on actually the round trip flight. So this is the the flight going there, and then I added the flight coming back as well. I bought them separately. I didn't buy this as a round trip flight. I bought it as two one way because I wasn't sure if I was going to be coming back. Um, in June or July or um, in the beginning of October so I ended up buying them separate so that's why it's a little bit more expensive if you wanted to uh, if you knew how long you're gonna stay there you can go ahead and just buy a round-trip flight and it'd be way cheaper like probably closer to like $800 so that's how much I paid um, my visa is a multiple entry visa meaning I can go and leave Thailand and come back basically as much as I want within the six month period. Um, you do have to renew your visa after the first 60 days and then the second 60 days. Uh, you can extend it to 30 more days, but I'll explain that more when we get to the specific costs here. So it's $200 to have your visa and enter Thailand. I also went on vacation for two weeks uh, before arriving. So I spent about fifteen hundred on vacation, and I'm gonna include it in here. But in the end, I'll go ahead and show you the cost without the vacation. Uh, but this is kind of like what I spend here. So the total for getting to Thailand is, including the vacation, two thousand eight hundred. So not too bad. But um, this was two weeks of vacation, so that's like food, hotel, um, activities, entertainment going to the gym, paying like one day passes for the gym, you know, drinking coffee and beer every day. So that's it's relatively cheap for uh, a vacation. So my total for that was 2,800. Um, but let's get to the more important part, which is kind of like the living costs. So the first place that I st stayed at, if you watch my last video, I kind of overpaid for, I definitely could have found something a bit cheaper, but what I ended up paying for that was 200 a month. So the first month here, you see it's 400. So that's the first and last month. And I rented this for uh, three months at a time. So my May was, wait a minute, I'm missing something here. No, 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 okay, I got it. So in May, I paid the 200 plus 50, and that 50 is for air conditioning and water. In June, I just paid the 50, which was the air conditioning and water, and I had already paid that 200 in April. And then in July, I ended up moving to a new spot, which the price went down, and I had to pay the 300, which is two payments of 150. So the first month, July, which is 150, plus the last month, September, which is also 150 gives you 300 and then the $50 here is the um, the Wi-Fi the water and the electrical for the last place so here I didn't include the deposits in here so the deposits I would say are another hundred dollars each um, each time you sign up for a new place but I didn't uh, keep these in here because they just paid them back anyway so you don't really have to uh, account for you know losing that money or anything so uh, and then the following month in August I paid the 150 plus forty dollars no no I'm sorry yeah 150 plus the forty dollars in water um, my electricity and water went up the following month which was 50 and then my rent had already been paid in July for this month so grand total for housing was 1290 so as you can see that's extremely cheap uh, I'm from San Francisco so to get a studio room in like somebody's house or the basement would probably be around the same price as that 1290 
Um, pretty crazy. Like I said, this first three months, I overpaid a bit for the kind of place that I was living in. Um, and then this second part of the, the trip, I definitely like got a better deal. And there's people that pay even less than that, you know. Uh, if you don't really want air conditioning, which I got to have the air conditioning. Uh, but if you don't need air conditioning, you can find a place for 80 to $100, which is still decent. Um, so next is food and coffee. This is my second biggest expense. No, actually, I think it's my bi biggest expense. Um, I assumed, oh, let me show you guys the, um, the place that I stayed in real quick. So this is the outside of the building. It's called Verada Place. It was in Hoi Cao, which is a popular area for expats and like digital nomads to stay at. So it was a really nice area. I think that's kind of like the price or why I was paying that price. Because all the other places around there were about the same price as here. So I was kind of paying for the price of this one, which was nice because I got to meet a lot of uh, other nomads and uh, expats. So this is the inside. Very basic, just straight up essentials. Uh, the nice thing about these kind of apartments is that they are furnished. So you do have a bed. It comes with all these sheets. You have a cabinet, a desk. Um, on the outside you have like a sink and then you have a restroom here air conditioning as well uh, every Sunday I believe it was they would come in clean the sheets clean the bathroom reset everything give you new towels so for the cost of $200 a month that's extremely cheap still um, I was kind of just complaining because I, I found out after that there's places that were a little bit cheaper and they're about the same look I don't really have a photo of the other place I stayed in because um, they don't have a website or anything. They're like a really, really new um, apartment place. And most of the people that stayed there were students. So you kind of have to know Thai to even get a spot there. I just had my friend talk to them and that's how I got that spot. So the second column here or second row I have here is the food and coffee. So I probably could have spent less than what I did, but... I do love eating and everything was so cheap that I just felt like I would spend a little bit more money. So most of my meals were between one and three dollars, which is like uh, 30 to 100 baht. Um, so my first month I had spent, oops, my first month I had spent 300 on food and 60 dollars on coffee. My second month, same thing, 300 on food, 60 dollars on coffee. And then in June, I spent a little bit more on food and coffee. Um, I kind of got sick of eating Thai food every day. So I started eating some Western food like wings or pizza or um, I don't know what else did I have, burgers. Um, just some Western food. Same thing in July. Uh, I had more Western food. And then in August, I kind of chilled out on the Western food and then went back to Thai food. And then in September, I decided that I wanted to go and try as many places as I could. So I went to more expensive spots. I had a lot of things like uh, mango shakes. And, and I also started, oh wait, no, sorry. On, on these ones, I had mango shakes here, um, like a lot more desserts and stuff like that. But in September, I started a ketogenic diet. So I ate a lot of just like meat and vegetables. So it did start to... Um, add up because I had to you know order two things of meat with like no rice and then add vegetables so things got a little bit pricier in September but that's just kind of a given when you're when you're doing a diet like the ketogenic diet so let's go ahead and add this up so my total for food was almost double so $2,380 for food and coffee um, this is pretty much all my food, all my coffee, breakfast, lunch, dinner, every meal. Uh, still not bad compared to what you would spend in the U.S. I mean, each meal that I would eat in Thailand was an average of 2 to $3. And something in the U.S. is your minimum paying 7 7 to $10. So I'm not, I'm not too, uh, too worried about the cost of that one there. So... I also rented, oh, let me show you guys the food as well. So this is kind of like the traditional food that I would eat. Um, this is a papaya salad. It would be about a dollar or two. 
This is Pad Thai, everyone knows, which is about a dollar or two. Um, Pad Ka Pao, this is also about a dollar or two. I just put the three dollars on there just because there was days where you know I would want Western food, um, so I kind of just averaged it out and and put that in there for the price. Next up, I had my motorbike and gas expense. So this was the same cost every single month. It was uh, let's see, seventy-five dollars for the rental, and then twelve dollars per yeah per month on gas. Uh, so only $12 a month on gas, which was only $3 per week on gas. So $3 would get me a full tank in my motorbike and last me about a week. So that's going to the gym, going to the co-working space, going to um, eat, anything else like that. Uh, it was all $87 every month. So the total cost for that was $520. $522. So pretty cheap. I got like a decent sized motorbike. Um, I didn't get a motorcycle. I'm thinking about getting a motorcycle next time. Uh, I'll do another video on that. But here is the motorbike that I got. It's just a basic Honda Click 125cc. Most people ride these around. Super simple. It was a 2015 model. Not bad uh, for a scooter. So that was that expense. And then my other expense was visa and border run so my visa as i showed here was two hundred dollars um, that would give me a basically a six month entry into thailand after the first 60 days you need to extend your visa for another 30 days which would be fifty dollars so that's the expense here in may was a fifty dollars and then in june after this month had ended i had to do a border run so basically you have to leave thailand um, get a stamp that you left and then you can get one other stamp coming back in and that will give you another 60 days and then after that 60 days you pay the $50 and it extends it for another 30 days and then after that you have to leave renew your visa which is this 200 and then continue the cycle so you can do that twice a year so basically you could stay in Thailand all year long um, so that's really all you have to do and you can just go to a bordering country and then go to the US Embassy and uh, apply for another visa which super simple you just gotta fill out some paperwork saying uh, like this is my job and I'm I'm flying to Thailand just for a vacation and blah 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 so my next expense is oh let's add this up All right, so the total expense for that was $320, relatively cheap again. And my next expense was the gym. I went to two different gyms. The first gym I went to was Go Gym. It's like an outside gym. I'll show you guys a picture of it here. So this is the outside of Go Gym, or it's like an outside style gym. So on the wall here they have, or on this chain link fence wall thingy, they have a bunch of fans and stuff. Uh, to keep the place kind of cool, but it was mostly hot in there. So I tried to go to the gym early in the morning. Here's another photo at night. It was really nice at night, but the only thing that sucks is it's it gets really packed there around, you know, five or six normal gym times. So my expense for the first three months was $75. That was uh, $25 a month. And then I moved to a different gym. I don't have a photo of it right now, but the second gym I went to was $30 a month. It's a brand new gym. It was really nice, but honestly, if I were to sign up for another gym membership, it would be at Go Gym. So I would just go back to the first gym that I was at. Um, so let's go ahead and total up these costs here. So the total for that is $165. Super cheap. Let's go ahead and average that out. So $165 divided by the six months so that's only 27 a month not bad it's about the same price as the gym gym memberships here in the United States uh, not as many people go to the gym in Thailand I feel like a lot of them are Westerners and then some Thai people that are really dedicated uh, but yeah so the the cost is about the same as the US uh, my next category here is entertainment um, this fluctuates a lot this is really just depends on like how much you want to spend but for me, it was usually about a hundred, you know, 
to 250 and then this month I went on vacation so I spent 400 that was on flights and Airbnbs and then my other costs pretty much stayed the same as far as um, traveling so if I traveled anywhere else in Thailand I'd still be spending about the same amount um, on like motorbike and food and coffee and stuff like that which was nice uh, but the only thing that would really change is like the flight and then I would pay extra for like an Airbnb or something. So this 100 includes getting massages, uh, going out at night, um, just anything that's, that has to do with entertainment, going to the movies, going bowling, playing ping pong, playing pool, uh, anything like that. So I'll show you guys some pictures of some of the places that I went out to. So here's Northgate. Uh, it's like a jazz bar, which is really fun. This is probably one of the most popular things uh, in Thailand or in Chiang Mai. They have like a little upstairs here and then they just have a bunch of tables. Normally this place is completely packed by 9 o'clock. Uh, but as you can see here, it's kind of quiet. This is probably earlier on. But this is one of my favorite places to go in Chiang Mai. And then if you wanted to go out, go out, like go to bars and dance and stuff. This is Zoe in yellow. Uh, normally it's not this packed, but... This is basically the main avenue here. So on the right here, you have Zoe and Yellow Pub, which is like the hip hop music. That's ma mainly where I would stay at. And then over here, they have the normal Zoe and Yellow, which is basically just hardcore like EDM music. Um, in the back here, they have a reggae bar. On this other side, they have a rock bar. Uh, they have a, like a side trance bar over here and then they have another one here that plays like Pitbull and stuff. So, uh, yeah, this was a really fun place to go. I was surprised because Chiang Mai is a really relaxed type place. Um, but it's pretty fun to go to Zoe and Yellow. You definitely have to go if you're in Chiang Mai. So the total cost for this is 1250 dollars. And the next category I have here is miscellaneous. This is basically just things that I had to buy when I went to Thailand that I necessarily didn't buy in the United States. Um, things that I couldn't buy and some things that I forgot. So in April, I spent about $80, which was just getting things like towels or um, sunscreen or a hamper or anything like that. Anything I had forgotten uh, in the United States or couldn't buy. I added it into that miscellaneous category. Uh, same thing when I moved to my second apartment. I had purchased some new things for that place and I ended up buying a pair of like shoes or something that was like 30 bucks. So total miscellaneous cost is not very high. All right, so this is basically my whole total for everything I had spent on all my basic needs in Thailand. with a grand total of $6,100, which is so cheap. $6,000 would last probably like two, two months, two and a half months in the United States, especially somewhere like Los Angeles or the Bay Area where everything's extremely expensive. Um, but yeah, that's not bad at all. Um, let's see. Where is, okay, I've got my other. All right, so my grand total for everything spent. So this is getting to Thailand, going on vacation, staying in Thailand for six months. Total grand costs are $1,250. Eight thousand nine hundred and seventeen dollars. Crazy cheap. This is for Chiang Mai. It's going to be a little bit more expensive for places like Bangkok or in the south. Uh, this is why people go to Chiang Mai and live for months to like start their business or travel. Just things are just so cheap there. So if you guys ever want to go to Chiang Mai, expect that this is about how much you'd pay. Um, as for 2017, I'm going to be heading there in January. Uh, excuse the 
months here. I'm going to change those, but this is kind of what I expect to pay when I go this time around. I'm going to be getting a one bedroom apartment instead of a studio just because I want the kitchen and a uh, swimming pool and stuff like that. I don't want to upgrade too much because I still want to keep my expenses low, but this is the new place that I'll probably be moving into. This is the outside, has a swimming pool, a gym, sauna, a couple of other things, and this is the inside here. It has a living room, separated bedroom, kitchen, and there's also a washing machine in there. So just a little bit different than my last place, a little bit nicer. Um, going to be paying double, but still overall extremely cheap. Uh, I'm not going on vacation this time, so that expense will be a lot cheaper. Um, but let's go ahead and add the grand totals up here. So the total for my visa and flight is $1,200. i am also going to be spending less on my flight. My flight there I got is only $500, and I'm hoping to find another $500 flight back. I just don't know how long I'm going to stay, if it's going to be three months, four, five, or six months. So this is kind of just an estimate. Um, let's go for the total here. All right, so 6,932 for all my living expenses. All right, so as you can see, I'm actually gonna be hopefully spending less this time around. Uh, one of the main reasons is because I'm not going on vacation, uh, but I also figured out how to cut down the price on some of these other things and uh, yeah, 8,132 this time around for a total of six months. As I said before, I don't know if I'm going to be spending that much time there, uh, but we will see. So if you guys had any questions, just let me know in the comments. Uh, this is what you could expect to pay for staying in a really nice spot. Um, if you took out the vacation here, this is what you'd expect to stay at like a very average place. So that's going to be it. I'll be making some more video guys, so just uh, stay tuned for